Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next video in the staging guard build. I'm sure you're kind of tired of seeing this area of the staging yard, but it's the most easiest place and convenient place for me to start out at and kind of where most of the things are happening right now. But at least I have a locomotive in there at this point. Or at this time, anyway. Um, to catch everybody up, I went through and got the tops screwed into the frames. I'm not going to show you all the all of those, as they all look the same. You know, the next screw looks just like the other. It took me a little longer than I had anticipated, because I did do pilot holes, and the drill barely fit in the space that I had. So it took me maybe two to three times as long as it should have. Wasn't really timing myself, but just from how things have gone in the past, that's how it felt. Um, once I did that, I got all the switches out onto the blueprint, for lack of term, the track plan, that's a better word. And Laid them out, got them lined up, you know, looked at them and realized that some of them that I'd bought, mainly these two, were brand new, essentially, even though they were used. And some of them I'd bought them from another place and I've bought from them before. I saw in the pictures that they lacked the plastic cotto piece and some of them had been cut shorter. That doesn't really matter to me because, like I said, you know, this is as far back. People are just going to flip the switches with their hands. Um, but they were really dirty. I don't know why. Um, and I must have missed it in the pictures. I think part of it is they had the wires wrapped around them like that switch there. And I'll show a couple pictures I took when I was cleaning them. That's what they looked like. And here's the aftermath of the rags that I used. And you can see they were pretty bad. I will admit some of this is from the paint on the ties. I did use 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean it. You can kind of see them in here in this area, how it took the paint off of them. I'm not worried about that, as I said in the last video, um, I'm only going to be doing scenery here with the engine facility, and so that can be left out, and I don't care how, I don't care how the other ones look. I did end up getting these four switches from a store that was closing down, and I thought with these, I'd be able to do all of the switches along here. However, I was missing one left-hand switch. I thought about just taking this one and using it where I needed it, but I then remembered I have this Pico switch, and I figured why buy another switch when I've got this one that um, will work. I have a Pico switch up there, I use them on the modules that I have that I take to shows and they work fine. They're, you know, probably my second favorite switch after the Kata ones. And uh, just figured I'd use this one here. I cleaned it up and uh, made sure that it was ready for this. And these tracks are just stub end anyway down at the end. So it's kind of off on its own and won't be a problem there. So that's what we're doing there. Um, what's the next thing on the list? Uh, because I didn't buy that switch, I used some of that money to buy um, circuit breakers. That way, this is kind of the last wiring piece, you know, besides the... Um, other staging that I'll, or not staging, but the other addition I'll be putting along over here, but that'll be a bit. And 
this is, you know, really close. So I bought circuit breakers for it um, so that I can upgrade from my power cab to my SB5 that I have. And, um, you know, I think that that'll work out a lot better. I did realize I'm low on wire for going from point to point. Uh, so I'll end up buying some more of that. I don't really need white as I think this will work just fine, but, um, I definitely need red. I use red and white mainly because that's what my feeders are. No other reason than that. So that's where we're at. Um, oh, I guess I can show. I forgot about this part. I don't know how, because locomotive's there. I went in and connected this piece of flex track up to the Helix flex coming out and did a test run and the locomotive went up and down just fine. Um, you know, it still has the power there as you can see, but I do need to clean the track. I haven't ran anything on it, so it's just kind of dirty. So that's kind of where we're at and how it looks right now. I will go through and um, start doing the switches and the track work later tonight. And we'll be back with more of an update once that's done. All right, here is a different view to start off with an update of the staging yard. I have all of the track put in and nailed down. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Um, I even had enough track to get the staging, or not the staging, but the engine facility done down here. Can't wait to get some engines down there instead of up on the layout. But, oh, I didn't vacuum up as much as I thought. Um, really happy with how it turned out. Um, I finished most of it last night as far as the track, but um, once it hit midnight, I knew I needed to get some sleep, and I called it quits and finished up the engine facility this morning and kind of into the afternoon. The only thing that I did different with the track plan is I added this switch here which in turn allowed me to add that track there ending to that second uh, leg. It would have been nice to have gone the entire way, but even though it was really tempting to put the track in, you know, right close there, I knew it was too much. And when, Besides, when I saw it, that was kind of the plan anyway, was to end it at that leg. And reason for it is I looked up and saw my maintenance away train that's sitting there. And knew that that was going to be a perfect length for that. And maybe even a little bit longer of one because I've got a few more Difco dump cars that I can put on it. But I was willing to lose the seven inches or whatever the switch is in order to gain another track. So that's what we did with that. As far as laying the track, I'm sure somebody's already done this. Um, I did <laughs> these two first, looked down and saw how wavy they were and decided to try this, I didn't really want to use a ruler or that. Um, that would have been better, but it just, I didn't have one that was really handy at the time. But I had the car railer or whatever it is that you call it, that you put the cars on and put it to the tracks and put the back end on a spot where there was already a nail. And then wherever the hole was at, I lined, you know, I made sure that it was lined up with that. 
screwed a little pilot hole for the nails so that they would go down straight and I wasn't causing a, you know, a wobble when I was putting the nails in. And, you know, it turned out good enough for a staging yard as far as I'm concerned. As you could see, you know, there at the beginning. Yes, there are some spots that you can see waves in it, but again, it's staging. It's not really, in my opinion, this isn't ever going to be a scenic portion of the layout. It's just storage. Except the engine facility, of course. So that's where we're at. I have all of the holes drilled um, for the feeders. So I'm going to start working on that. I will do um, get them wired up because as I was looking at it, um, I will need to have a terminal block down there, just a smaller one. And then I'll put a, the majority of them here that are feeding from right along there in the middle of the tracks. I'll feed them back this way. And then all the switches and stuff or feeders that I've already got will just feed onto this module here. So that's where we're at. I'm going to get that going. Um, I will just temporarily wire it to the Helix terminal blocks that I've got. Um, mainly because uh, that's where, actually, it won't be temporarily. I'm going to wire it to the Helix terminal block because that's where it's going to feed from and where the breaker is going to be because I want to have the staging and the Helix be one block. So that's what we're going to do. And even having it, even having it wired up now, it'll allow me to run the engine back and forth through it reliably and make sure that I don't have any shorts. So we're going to get working on that. 